Hello and welcome back to Elliot's podcast. And yeah, this week I'm actually, you can see I'm not in the park again, <laughs> but uh, there will be a special episode happening in a park this this next week, but this week I needed to not be in a park. It's very hot and I had a bunch of things come up, but I did want to keep keep going and doing stuff and I guess not being in the park I can really appreciate um just try to close this a bit more um not being in the park I could appreciate that I have any possibility (laughs) when I'm at home for whatever I want to work on and, and record and actually today I'll be playing a song that I wrote on my walk just before this this recording and I guess that's a good it's a good snapshot of of my creative process and it's not maybe not doesn't really matter for um for I'm sorry just looking at the camera it's definitely tilted in a weird way um it's it's not to uh, my creative process is not the creative process and it's a, it's always a work in process and it's about learning how to to tap into it and i could be watching a video just like like a few hours ago on youtube about songwriting and in that 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 bit of information will will come in and get synthesized and i can spit it out to you right now which was that the person said that the that your job is to like um, pick up little bits of ideas and then you and you record them as voice memos and then you and then you flesh those out as songs and it's very much that very much is how my my process has been been going for quite a we're going on on quite a bit of time now and it just so happens when I work in this way, the style of music is a lot different. It's it's very much bluesy and and funky kind of bluesy because I I work a lot now with with my hands and and what's in front of me and my voice and and um and it's 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 interesting because a lot of that really is actually music that I was. I, I kind of grew up uh, listening to the blues and funky music as a teenager, and and when you, be, which are the years when you were formed in consciousness, you, you're you're like aware that like okay, I have some choice in the matters. Like in high school, you start getting to pick some of your your courses that you want to do. In my day, you would kind of pick if you're going to be a musician or a jock. <laughs> that was very popular division. I think that's probably changing a lot, but. So that was music from my formative years, and and so it's, I'm kind of re I'm re tapping into it, and so yeah, I had a few topics to to talk about today. Um, one prompt that I have is is something I'll I'll call the the ejaculation of fear, which is I guess it came in my notebook, and that um, I know it's like buzzwordy, and it's meant to get people to tune into my podcast when I say that, but. It's it's uh, that phrase is referring to the daily you should you you can notice the daily outpouring and crying of fear that comes into the the mind. Like it does not take much for it to to come to show up. Fear, worry, doubt, all their all the siblings, and. Uh, it came up for me recording today's show for sure. Like, I uh, I would probably put off doing it for as long as I could, and and that's why I want to talk to you about the possibilities for you to <laughs> also do something uh, similar in your own way. And it, in, and there's a Miles Davis album called In a Silent Way. And so maybe it's in your own silent way. And it's quite a topic that, and I, I've gone through this topic a bit in past episodes, and I'm aware of it. Um, 
I'm aware of its effects on people and and the pressure the the pre- what I'm getting at really is the pressure to be on on video and online and and it will push you to your maximum and it's not for everyone I I've I I know that and it's it's fine and so the, you're, you're, I'm not the type of person who's th- saying that you should now show up on video because Elliot's doing it it's it's quite the opposite but it's really just me reporting in on on what goes on behind the scenes to do the, this podcast is that it's it it brings me to my my maximum um, in the same way that recording music will also do that and um, and putting it on Spotify that will that will put me to my maximum basically what that means is all my fears will will come to the front and when you when you find that thing in your life where where all the fear shows up I think you've you've found the gateway into I guess what you'd call infinity because when you're when you're able to to show up at the gates and you say I'm here to work and you start and you start doing it then um you you as Jeff Tweedy says in the the guy from Wilco said I re I I re listened to his book how to write a song you will disappear and what that means is you that's basically code for you will enter into flow state when you when you do that thing that pushes you to the maximum and so it's it's the podcast for me pushes me because like I have to um, turn on the camera and uh, and then and as this co- episode will conclude, I'll be playing music. So I actually do the music before I do this part. I kind of get that out of the way. I, like I get that out of the way first, and then I can talk and and give some. Excuse me. Don't record after dinner. <laughs> Um, you, I, 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 I do the music and then I can talk so that I, I can give a bit of insight and, and, and you get a little snapshot into my, to my thought process. But I do, you, you know, like there are people who, who comment and, um, ask me questions about the podcast and I'll, I'll give a shout out to Grant because he's been a good listener and he, He's an old friend from the maker type stuff community, and I can picture. And I don't. Maybe he does something like this already, but it, um, maybe doesn't show me or, or he has thoughts about it. But I, I bring him up because it's the type of person where they can, he he can um, make make videos about what he's he's working on, and he has actually showed me some interesting stuff that's going on with a project. <laughs> I don't want to say much because it's not fair to just t- take take people's you know people's communications and and put them into my podcast. But the point of the matter is is um, there's actually a book called Show Your Work by Austin Kleon, and I read it again. Read it. I think I read Steal Like an Artist a long time ago, and then I reread uh, Show Your Work recently. It's a very quick read on a if you get it from the library on digital format. And I got through pretty quickly, and it was a good refresher for me about what I do and why I do it, and and it helped me reconnect with some of my theories about that the future of music is not really, it, it's really much a deconstruction of the traditional image of an artist, which was that they're they're well groomed and shown to you, and they they they're not human. The future of music to me is very human in that you can play all kinds of different music. Like no, no, you don't need to have a linear structure to like, okay, you're this musician with this story. Um, story referring to like, like a lineage of, of music that you played and it, it all flows together very nicely because that's kind of what the record industry sort of does is it... it it, it wants to create that that fictional um, lineage and 
And to me, it's very much about like you show up and you, you just play and you, you evolve and you change and, and that's the metamorphosis of, of the person. And so show your work is, is about that because he, he recommended that people, he wrote the book before social was this, was this, I'm about to use the word violent. I mean violent because it's an onslaught um, between TikTok and Instagram. That's an onslaught of images that are moving and their, and their, their video is very much, um, is the, is the way it works. Like it's sad, but it's, and it throws a lot of introverted people for a loop, myself included, because these, these sites and algorithms, they, they don't want your static images and your, your poetic stuff very much anymore. It can, it can work and memes do that, but they want your video. They want your, they want, they want your talking and they don't, they don't want what I'm doing. No, 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 no. They don't want a guy who sits quietly and, and, and tries to connect with people. They want fast video that is cut quickly and it ends quickly and it's got a punchline in 10 seconds and it's, it's uh, scrollable and consumable, shareable. And that's okay. I don't have any problems with that because that's, that's the business model and that's what's, it's, it's what's working for them. They know what they need. They, especially because TikTok came up on Instagram's heels with this format even more. I mean, Snapchat was already had stuff going on and then with the disappearing quick images and and Instagram had to copy that because Snapchat was coming up and then they put them, they seem to have done a good job of putting them aside for a while. And now it's TikTok is the battle. So all this to say is that you, you have a choice to make if you, if you need, if you, if you have an, a message to, to share is that you have the choice to, to make that you have the option to, to show up in, in, in be on video and, and you don't have to necessarily do it, but the, the option is there to, to do it. And it, it's, as I said, it, it really throws people for a psychological loop if they, if they want to maintain any, um, mental health <laughs> And, but, but when you get through it and when you do it, I do believe you become stronger. And that's why I don't really, I don't criticize the, this change in the way media is being made, which is, you know, the user generated media. I don't really, excuse me, I need to clear my throat. I don't really have so much of an issue with it because it's the same. I used to hear a quote about public speaking that people would rather die than having to get up in front of an audience. And I can relate to that from what I go through to, to be sitting in this chair right now. And, but the, the, the thing is, is that this is an opportunity for you to, to get over that fear and, and what what happens is you get better at what you what you do and you uh, and so the the testimonial that i have is is that from all these episodes of me kind of talking and blabbering on if, if, as you would say i'm very much uh in touch with what my message sort of is and my my thing and it, and i think people who've listened to a lot of episodes can understand what that is as well it's a, it's very much on the line of, of getting over the inner critic. And if it weren't for doing this, I would really just have these ideas in my notebooks and they wouldn't really be, they wouldn't be interacting with the world and they wouldn't, there would be no potential to help people and, and, and show them that there's a possibility for taking your ideas outside of your, your bubble. So back to the social media thing is, is that it's, it's very easy to write all the stuff off as like, okay, it's toxic and it's not for me. 
but don't just don't do that like it's it's and i'm saying that to the creative um right right brain type artiste is that which i think everyone has that part of their brain is that it's an easy way out it, when you say that it's like you, you can come up with any case for why being on social is is bad but when you when you look for what the the benefit is that you can share your message and and work through your issues then i think from this point of view it's it's a much more empowering place so now back to the prompt of the ejaculation of fear and doubt and worry i think that if you can if you can deal with that stuff early in the morning it's the better way to <laughs> um it's the better way to to work because it's it it's what i'm getting at on this topic which we're going to put social media aside for a, a little bit is is this goes back to my biggest biggest discussion topic which is your most creative work and with this i i labeled the mcw and if you read a little bit of abraham maslow he he has a similar concept which is called the self-actualized human which is like the high once your basic needs are met you you work through the pyramid upwards into and so for me the top of the pyramid is called the most creative work it's the work that no one can no one can touch and no one can 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 duplicate replicate remove from you it's yours you own it it's your shtick it's miles davis doing cool jazz when everyone else was trying to speed up and play too fast and so the most creative work to me is becomes the most if you're ever stuck in a state of fear and worry and which can lead to other other maladies such as depression stress where you can't sleep when things aren't really going that well for you and you go into dark times and dark places i believe that's the time when you can can alchemize take you can take the darkness which is all these fear and worry and doubt and you throw it into a furnace and it now becomes fuel for your most creative work and then and then we start to re- re- replace those words of fear worry and doubt with much more magical type words like faith um joy disappearing <laughs> flow state in the zone like like you everything gets replaced like you stop you stop living in a in a place of pain and you start really living and enjoying life and i just reporting reporting back from my own experiences that i know how easy it is that life can be become like this big monster on you and i think the only way out of it is really to be able to find the the time and energy to go into your your mcw and it for some people it, it could be late at night that they they're able to get to this but for me my my energy is drained late at night and and it's actually I embarrassingly very early now and and I can't I can't really be that creative. I I I can only drink tea and read a little bit. Even the reading that I do is very poor. <laughs> I don't take in a lot of the information very well, so the reading isn't that great. And then the big focus for me at nighttime is actually how to get to sleep. I have this little I'm just trialing it out. This is a camera light that I use for for video, but um, I've set it to red because I I had briefly read some read something about low low red light, 
as as a possible like if you keep it in the atmosphere of your getting ready for sleep um that's possible I, i'm not saying this is going to help me sleep but the i mean blue light keeps you up and so red light it kind of makes sense that red light might help and there's a lot of products for for beaming in more red light into the room but the evening for me is about trying to get to sleep almost as as soon as i can because it's it's hard with the sun the summertime the sun sets later so i find it very difficult to wind down and i'm 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 doing some experiments lately on how to get down quicker yeah i wouldn't expect that you can get to sleep like really quickly i do understand that you need time to to get into it and so that's what the thing is you got to devote i think like half an hour to an hour like okay an hour realistically so that you can wind down get to sleep and then and then in the morning you have to make the time to be able to to do a little bit of your mcw your most creative work and to me that's um yeah so that's what 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 my focus is and it it really does help a lot when you when, as i said when it's when times are difficult um you can always return to to this and for some people that is really sports it's it's hiking it's it's knitting like i want i want it to be very inclusive that we're not just talking about music for me that happens to be to be a special place and it always has been but i do have other things that and other interests that are that keep growing and they they do um they're all part of a similar practice for me i would definitely would categorize being in nature as part of it and that's why you've seen on a lot of the shows that i do video scapes of sunsets and that sort of thing i really enjoy trying to capture some of some things i see in nature and try to translate them over into into this artwork and this the music and and it's really comes down to the idea of earth envy which is that if we can if we if we can look at the earth and and spend time in it then then we should probably we will probably only by extension pay more attention to a lot of the issues that we're doing with blowing up the planet but if we don't spend the time in nature and like looking at it and we ignore it because we were distracting ourselves with other matters then then we won't ever make any progress with cooling down the the planet so um but uh, my my real my real thing with nature is just that it's it's time to disconnect and it it does lead to creativity and it's it just it solves a lot of problems to for just like on a personal level to be able to to disconnect and you know you're breathing in the the air from the trees and that sort of thing so all right so this was um that was this this week and so this this song that I'm about to sing is is yeah I wrote it on the walk and it's called I didn't know that I needed you and when I sing it it sounds very much like I didn't know that I needed you it like I needed I needed you <laughs> that's why I don't I don't love um, vocal music and I don't love singing but you'll hear it it the singing brings out um, it brings out soul and it brings it makes the music come alive and it it also gives the song a lot of structure just by having some songs and and some lyrics and singing and you can even hear maybe when the song falls off of the the structure because like i wrote it an hour ago and i also you'll also hear they didn't you didn't there's no there's barely any lyrics and that actually yeah that's how i kind of write my lyrics i just the song repeats so i didn't know i needed you I didn't know I needed you. I didn't know I needed you until I had the blues. So that's something to think about. That's pretty, the the lyrics just popped in my head. They're nothing to do with any, anyone or anything specific, 
But when I reinterpret them back later, there's some interesting things that I think about, which is that um, don't wait for like a massive crisis in your life to 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 deal with your with your mental health or struggles because that's kind of what I, what I'm implying by, by my interpretation of these lyrics is like I didn't know that I needed you until I had the blues. And that's sort of the way the world works is that we we don't really know we needed to take care of ourselves until we've we've maybe hit the rock bottom or that we've lost everything or like name name whatever type of crisis that comes up it's very very uh, it can it's very personal to everyone but um that is sort of personal growth is is that we we take challenges and then we we alchemize them into into the next stages and it's not always an easy process and and it does go back to what i was saying before about how you you take your 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 darkest emotions and they become fuel for your your brightest moments um but only through doing the work and and sitting down and writing writing the music or or channeling that into your thing that you're trying to to do um but yeah so that's the song and i hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching and listening this week and we'll see you soon Okay, thank you. This is Elliot's podcast. I'm Elliot Feinberg. Take care now.